For over 50 years, he's been the ultimate movie star. Standing at six foot two with that menacing stare and the gravelly voice, Clint Eastwood is the original Wild West gunslinger and bad boy cop. A celebrated actor and director, Clint's first role was as a cowboy in the TV series Raw Hide, which turned him into a household name. His first foray into film was equally as successful in the original spaghetti western A Fistful of Dollars. It was an international sensation, and the sequels were even bigger hits. Clint was so well cast as the gunslinging silent loner that people just assume that's what he's really like. Uh, no, it isn't true, uh, actually. Uh, it's very complimentary in a way, because if people think that the characters are you, then obviously you've made the audience feel that, that you are that particular person. That's what an actor's main objective is. And there's no person he's played better than Harry Callahan. In 1971, Clint's iconic portrayal of a bad boy cop in Dirty Harry paved the way for every tough cop movie to come. You've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? In that same year, he made his directorial debut with a film called Play Misty For Me. The picture met critical acclaim and was nominated for a Golden Globe. Here began his reputation as an actor's director, using his experience in front of the camera to get the best out of his cast. Everything I do as a director is based upon what I prefer as an actor. And, what, and, the, and there, it's all a learning process of over the years of uh, addition and subtraction. Uh, you find things that directors do that you like, and you find things that they do that you don't like. And I just uh, direct like the way I like to be directed. I like to come in, I like to bring what I'm going to bring to the table, and then if the director doesn't like it, you know, critique it and tell me where he thinks something could be added or something could be subtracted. Eastwood's talents as a director are undeniable. He's directed every movie he's starred in since the early 90s, and he's directed nine actors to Oscar nominations. So how does he do it? Having come up in that side of the business, I'm very, very uh, sympathetic to the securities and insecurities, the securities that are necessary and the insecurities that are unnecessary to make a good performance. And so what I do is I let the actors bring a lot to the table. When they bring something that's good, it's fine. And when they bring something that's not quite so good, I, uh, I make adjustments to it. I, I like to see what everybody does instinctively. I like to see what the instincts bring to it. And then after a while, we can fiddle with it. If you go right away, and if I, I can go, and I've done that, I mean, I can do it if necessary. You go in and say, okay, I want you to come over here, I want you to hang up your coat, and I want you to say this as you're walking across to the mirror, and talk to yourself in the mirror as you're combing your hair, and walk out of the room. Uh, you, you can do that, but sometimes you just say, well, let's see what happens. Just go ahead. When it comes to directing, Eastwood's style is very much his own. For example, he says, okay, instead of calling action or cut. I guess you could call it quite organic. Q. Malkovich, and OK. His uh, philosophy about it seems to be if people have time to rehearse, they have time to figure out what to fake. I think that's probably fair. And I think there's probably some degree of truth in it, or even a great degree of truth in it. We were trying to figure out how to do some shot and connect one thing to another, and we're all standing around, and they're talking about it, and I'm listening. And he goes, well, let's just, let's just try something, because you know we've, we've, we've We've come this far, let's not ruin it by thinking. In the 90s, he had some hits and misses. The decade started strongly with Unforgiven, his first ever Oscar win. Then the rest of the 90s was a bit of a roller coaster of successes and failures. But in 2003, he was back on top. Mystic River won him two Oscars, took in over $100 million at the box office, and had his cast in awe. I don't think I've ever worked with a. Uh a director as confident and assured and as efficient as, as Clint Eastwood. I learned a lot about, uh, about uh, the economy of filmmaking. He is an amazing presence and he's tremendously powerful and he is, uh, you know, a cultural icon. And, um, you, know, you know, sometimes you look at him and you can't get it out of your head, you know, oh my God, that's Clint. The greatest lesson that I learned from working with Mr. Eastwood is that to have confidence in not only yourself, but the people that you employ um, from
from the very top of the ladder all the way down the line to have the kind of confidence in them and you can let them know that you have that kind of confidence. It's, an, it's a quiet kind of confidence that allows everyone to really express themselves and to enjoy the process. So often, uh, you, you, when making a film, you encounter so much fear and so much uncertainty. Well, what? A, and oh my! And on Mr. Eastwood's set, there's none of that going on. He really is amazing, especially when you consider he's now nudging his 80s. In fact, he went down in the record books as being the oldest person to win a Best Director Oscar for Million Dollar Baby at the ripe old age of 74. His co-star in that film, Hilary Swank, credits Clint's gentle star with helping her win her second Oscar for her performance as a boxer. You know, Clint is a true anomaly and he's a one of a kind and um, his, his gift is, he says he hires the people that he feels is right for the job and then he lets them do their job. Now, he says that, but you watch the movie and you realize how gently you've been guided and led um, under, under his you know, watchful eye. And um, it's such a gift, though, because he's, he doesn't push you or um, force you. Um, and he's just so keen and so observant and so brilliant. And he's also an amazing person. So it just is a joy all around. In Flags of Our Fathers, two masters of the business came together, Eastwood and Spielberg. Then in the sequel, Letters from Iwo Jima, Clint Eastwood picked up another two Oscar nominations. And once again, the cast were blown away by this experience of being on Clint's set. Working with Clint was one of the greatest experiences in my life. Before Letters from Iwo Jima, I was just another guy watching his movies. He and his crew welcomed us and made everything easy. He has a warm heart and a sharp eye as a director, and he trusts actors. Quinn gave me a lot of freedom for me, um, listen to any ideas I had. Uh, before shooting, he said, the script is just like a blueprint. Uh, we can do anything. The success of Gran Torino took everyone by surprise. In fact, it was the biggest commercial success of his career and all with a cast of relatively unknown actors. Now, some speculated that Eastwood's character, Walt Kowalski, was in fact the retired Dirty Harry. I started thinking, you know, I've kind of lost the old touch because in the old days it was kind of, uh, I had fancy lines like, Diane ain't much of a living and, uh, and uh, do you feel lucky, punk, and, uh, and, and make my day and stuff. And now I just sit there and go, <sighs> And it's, it's certainly easy on the dialogue part. I don't have to do anything. I just go like that. I had some teenagers come up to me today who, when I got down to La Quinta. They, they said, just, just do the mm part. And I thought, okay, that's all right. You know, you start out in your career as a young guy and pretty soon you end up as an old car. And that's me. Uh, but, but the Gran Torino is a, is a good car and it's a solid car and it's going to be around for a while. And, uh, I wish they just made them now. I just wish they made them with electricity instead of gas. Changeling saw a very different side of Clint's much touted gentle guidance style of directing. He showed great sensitivity with a very delicate subject matter and empathy that carried over onto set. But he's extraordinary. He is the greatest. I can't say enough about him. I am, I could go on forever. Um, he's just, he's so, he's so decisive. He's got, he's got such a great way about him with everybody, every single person. I think that's what it is. He's just, he's got that great leadership quality of a great man who, who values every single person on the film and they know it and so they bring their best and it's appreciated and and yet he is does not suffer fools and he's very clear 
I've never seen a director command so much respect, not because he's Clint Eastwood, but because he is so gracious and thoughtful and connected to every single person. So it was a pleasure, and I'm sure every single person on the crew would say the same. I mean, Clint was just one of the nicest guys I've ever met. He's so down to earth, and just to be able to meet him was incredible. Get along work with him. Today, Clint Eastwood continues to redefine cinema with his unique style. And even in his twilight years, he goes about his work with a passion that is uncompromised. You treat every sequence like it's the most important sequence in the film and you'll always be happy. And that, that's kind of a good piece of advice for anybody, I think. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your Movie Network channels. It's all together better, on screen and at mnc.tv.